Okay, so as a laptop reviewer, I try my best to stay impartial. I don't have brand loyalties. I don't have preferences for one company over another. It really is, you know, what is the best option available right now for someone looking to buy a new device? And I've been called an Apple fanboy in some of my videos. I've been called an Apple hater in some of my videos, sometimes both in the same video. But I wanna have a conversation today about the Apple lineup, the, the M1 Apple Silicon based stuff. And this is good hardware. It's so good to the point where it's actually made it more difficult, more complex to purchase a new device for a lot of people. So I wanna draw your attention to the base model MacBook, the $999 MacBook Air. So this is a device that has an amazing battery life, like 11 to 12 hours of real world use. This is 40, maybe 50% longer than a competing Windows laptop of the same kind of battery size. And when it comes to performance, the M1 chips are weirdly capable. Even the fanless MacBook Air can keep up with some of the best stuff out there. It's a very energy efficient platform. And also, the screen, like the MacBook Air screen on a $999 device, you're getting high resolution, 400 nits, good color accuracy. That kind of spec does not appear on a $1,000 Windows laptop. You just don't get good screens like that at that price point. There are some hardware deficiencies though, like the MacBooks, they have a limited selection of ports right now. The screens have uh, no touch capabilities and the bezel is thick on it. It's not a particularly nice looking or new looking device anymore. And there's very little user repairability on this device. But in terms of the fundamentals, the stuff that really matters when it comes to a laptop user, the MacBook just does it really, really well. Now, if you're an Apple user or like a long-term Mac user, then this is great news, right? Even if you don't have Apple Silicon right now, in the future, if you pick up a device, it's gonna have Apple Silicon. But for Windows users, this stuff is just too good to ignore. Like if you are deeply entrenched in Windows, then you have no choice, right? But if you're someone that can, you could use a Windows device, but you have a preference for Windows or your workflow is just optimized around Windows or your apps are just, you know, you just prefer Windows for whatever reason, this is where things get complicated. So there are some Windows devices out there that can match what the M1 MacBook can do in certain categories, but none of them can do it as an overall package, certainly not at $999. And as a reviewer, I can't ignore this. I can't pretend like these Windows devices exist in a vacuum and like the MacBooks don't exist. It's irresponsible. It's like a Windows fanboy thing to do. The other day, I did a review on the LG Gram. This is a great device for someone looking for a super thin, super portable, ultra lightweight device. And I reviewed it from the perspective of a Windows user, right? If you are someone who wants to buy a Windows laptop, this is a great option. But then in the comments, someone mentioned that I didn't compare it to an M1 MacBook. And he's right. I should have. Like when I made the video, I put my mind into the mindset of someone who's looking for a Windows device. And usually if you're looking for a Windows device, you want a Windows device, right? So I didn't really mix the two. But then when I look at this objectively, take a step back and kind of look at the bigger picture of this, this LG Gram, as great of a device as it is, I would say that for most people who are actually interested in picking up a Gram, they're probably gonna be better off with a MacBook, which is a painful thing for me to say to someone who's trying to buy a Windows device, especially on this channel. But that's just the reality of the situation because the M1 MacBooks are so good right now. They have great battery life, good performance, great screens, excellent keyboards, the list goes on. They're just really good devices. And then the rumors point to 14 or 16 inch MacBooks with upgraded silicon, new design language, mini LED screens, the return of MagSafe, more ports, an SD card slot. I'm sure they'll be super expensive, but they'll be good. And when I think about it, it seems like there's no immediate or easy way for Microsoft to combat this. Certainly not with x86. Like you see what Intel and AMD have come out with recently. Those chips are really good but they just can't compete with the energy efficiency of what M1 MacBooks have to offer. Like, and it's not just hardware, right? It's also software. If you look at uh, like the Surface Pro X, and this is a product that I wanted to do a video on, but you'll understand in a second why I didn't. This is a product from Acer. It's the Spin 7, but this has the Qualcomm chip in it, like the ARM-based Windows laptop that is very energy efficient. And this was a great product. I mean, still it's, brand new. I don't even think this is on the market yet, but this doesn't have the software to make an ecosystem like this work. And the reality is, I don't think any other company could have pulled this off. Like Apple can make this happen. Apple made this happen because their rules are so strict to their consumers, their user base. 
and their developers. It's like you have these really strict rules that if you follow them, you can make cool stuff like this because Apple's developers were almost forced to make apps for Apple Silicon. Like Apple said, hey, we're moving platforms and now there's real financial incentive to do this. Money is a very powerful motivator. But you can't do that on Windows. There's no way that Windows would ever have this thing. Microsoft could never be like, hey, we're, we're switching over to ARM and that's it. You know, there's no other option. That's, that's never gonna be a thing, at least not in the near future. So this could have only happened on Apple's platform. So here's the thing, Apple's end game, like their at least immediate goal is to create this platform where their hardware and the software have this unified ecosystem where everything just works in this Apple way, right? And they're gonna get there. This was a really big step towards it. If you're someone who actually considers moving over to Apple's ecosystem and you're like a regular Windows user, my suggestion is this. If you wanna make the swap over to Apple's hardware, stick with apps that are multi-platform, like universal, so that you know if, if for whatever reason down the line, if Apple's hardware goes sideways, right? And they're making laser keyboards and weird stuff that you don't, you don't particularly like, you have the option of leaving the ecosystem, just going back to future Windows laptops. It could be four or five years, whatever it is, but you at least have that option. You're not contained and locked into like Apple's particular software. So that, yeah, I just, it, it's weird, right? As a reviewer, it's becoming harder and harder to recommend Windows devices over what M1 MacBooks offer. And this is only for this type of like an ultra book, right? Stuff for work or school or just like productivity based stuff. When it comes to gaming laptops, that's a whole different story. Like Apple gaming, <clears throat> no, but okay, you get the point. All right, hope you guys enjoyed this video. Thumbs if you liked it, subs if you loved it. See you guys next time.